Hey everybody, welcome back into Recordology. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're going to be taking a look and having a talk about clear tech, which is oftentimes labeled prison tech. I personally take issue to that. You're not going to want to miss this. This is Recordology. So as I alluded to in my intro, welcome in by the way, I take issue with the notion that clear electronics belongs squarely in the world of prison tech because as a child of the 90s, I grew up with awesome things that look like this and this and this. And they had nothing to do with the prison system. In fact, when I see stuff like this today, like a clear record player and a clear radio, I'm not thinking prison. I'm thinking this is insanely cool because I can look inside and being the nerd and the geek that I am and always have been, I can see the parts even though I may not know what they are or how they work. I think that's an antenna. I still get the pleasure of just knowing that I can see what's inside. And that's cool. It doesn't serve any practical application. I don't need to know what's on the inside, but I just like to know. I think it's cool. So a clear cassette player makes perfect sense to me. I think that this is a very, very cool thing. Now, as you know, perhaps, if not, I'm gonna tell you, there are two camps when it comes to tech, especially retro tech. Those who are usually newbies and embrace a lot of the cool, quote unquote, retro things, and those that get grouchy about companies like Urban Outfitters charging $38 for a cassette player that probably cost a buck and a half to make. I personally, and on this channel, have made it a point to be as accepting as possible, <laughs> make tapes, not war, for music lovers, not for painting people, not for you know, photographers, not for lawn mowers. These are for music lovers. It makes sense, I guess, considering it's a music player. But I am more friendly towards retro tech, modern tech, than a lot of my counterparts on here. Three, three key, meaning it's a one speed, fast forward only, no rewind, full auto stop, includes clear headphones, belt clip that is detachable, thankfully, because I don't like belt clips on these things. I like to take them off two AA batteries, or an AC adapter, which I will be providing. And on here, it is in French. So yeah, I this is really cool looking. So let's get into it and open it up and see if it's all that it's cracked up. Ooh, there's a nice picture on the back in French. Interesting that those are the two languages that they chose to go with. I guess the United States and there's the headphones. And France were the two markets. There is the player itself. Anything else in there? All right, let me recalibrate my shot. We'll take a continued closer look. All right, inside here, you've got uh, cassette player care tips, clean with a damp but never wet cloth. And some of this stuff you may scoff at, but you know, this is aimed at people that this is probably the first cassette player they've ever owned, which some people would argue is the problem because if this thing underperforms from what we're used to having grown up with cassette players, oops, we may be frustrated that, you know, kids as it were, or just people coming in, there's the, there's, you know, that is the icon of my childhood right there. Would be upset that, that they may get a less than stellar experience with cassettes and write it off as bad technology when in fact cassettes can sound amazing absolutely amazing so we'll be the judge of that i want to give this a fair shot and i want it to win what do i mean by win i want it to be good i want it to you know get the uh thumbs up from recordology even the actual cable itself you can see the two wires in there is clear that's really neat Look how in the uh, right one right there, look how the wires are, t are tied off inside that tiny capsule. I think that's pretty interesting. Really cool. And I, again, I like to see this stuff. I absolutely like to see this stuff. Why not? You know what I mean? It's fun. We can have fun with our electronics. There are so many people, it seems like out there, that are just so incredibly stern about this stuff that it has to be function over form. 
and they, you know, can't tolerate things that are fun because they're cool. They have to be the highest performer. And I almost, no, I guarantee you that if you look in the comments down below, you probably won't have to go but three or four comments down before you will hear the words Sony Walkman, which we're not going to look at a Sony Walkman today. We're looking at an Urban Outfitters modern retro cassette player for people that have heard about this. Their parents had one, but they certainly haven't had one. This is maybe their first physical media. Maybe they skipped over vinyl and they're you know going straight into cassettes as cassettes have their miniature revival that eh, maybe not will ever top out to where vinyl is, but they don't know about what this is like. So they're going to experience it and they're going to buy a Guardians of the Galaxy tape and they're going to buy this cassette Walkman type of device. Now, cassette Walkman is kind of a, it is a brand trademark name, but it's become sort of like Kleenex where a Kleenex is a tissue and a tissue is a Kleenex kind of a thing. So to say Walkman kind of just means portable cassette player. We are, by the way, going to compare this we're going to put it through its own paces, but we're also going to compare it to an actual retro, you know, name brand portable cassette radio device. This one is one that has incredible sentimental value to me because this is one that I had as a kid. I also did have a Sony Walkman. I think it was a WMF 2015 or something like that. But I have more memories with this guy right here. And I know it's not the best quality. It's not the best top of the line, but it was an entry level unit even back then when it came out in like 1993 ish. But to me, or maybe even early like 91, but to me, this is a gold standard and it performs well. It's solid and it's well built. So we're gonna use that as a sound test and a feature comparison to this guy. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this clear tech portable cassette player. Okay, looking at the box here, I wanna point out something kind of bizarre. So check this out, AM FM mono analog radio. First of all, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a digital tuner, but all audio, whether it's radio, tape, CD, digital streaming is going to be analog by the time it hits your ears. Everything that is digital has to be converted back to analog. So it's just a very strange way to put that AM, FM, mono, analog radio. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's look at this device up close. It is awesome it is really really cool and i will be you know as a point of comparison sort of you know having the bulky sharp next to it it's quite a bit smaller than the sharp and you know this is a pretty common size form factor this was a large unit even in its day if you got like a panasonic or a sony you would get kind of a sleeker design and then if you got something that was sharp usually was pretty top of the line but if you got like an RCA or General Electric or something like that realistic brand, you would usually get a kind of a chunkier, bulkier form factor. But this one is pretty sleek. It's not much larger than a cassette tape. Remember the Sony commercials where they said that they had a Walkman out that was barely larger than a cassette tape shell? Take a cassette out of its case and most people just see an empty box. But Sony saw something quite different. Sony introduces the only cassette player as small as a cassette case. The incredible sounding Super Walkman. Just for comparison, here is a cassette tape shell. It is definitely not in that neighborhood. <laughs> We're still very bulky here. So you've kind of got um, slim, bulky, and bulkiest in terms of what I've got in front of us here. But that aside, let's take a look at this guy. It is really cool. Here is the... Uh, AM, FM, yeah, AM FM radio up top there. Pretty basic. We've got an analog tuning dial. You can see how it all works, which is awesome. The tuning selector is just this white tip. And this is, you know, this functionality is what's happening behind the scenes of a non clear unit as well. There's our AM FM switch. There's our tape radio switch. Let's take a look at these buttons, by the way. Just what you'd expect. They don't have an incredibly pleasing snap, but they function. We've got stop, play, and fast forward. I'm gonna put this upright just so we can curtail anybody mentioning the fact that yes, indeed, I did have it upside down. So stop, fast forward, play. A cheap portable cassette player recorders would have a one direction 
operation to save costs. So how do you rewind? <laughs> I wonder how many Urban Outfitters questions come in about this. Well, how do I rewind my tapes? You just flip it over and fast forward it and then flip it over again and you go back and forth, back and forth. That's the struggle of my childhood, right? <laughs> there is the volume knob. You can see the full extent of it underneath the clear body there. They've made this top kind of smoky. I don't know why. Why bother making this foggy when this is like clear, clear? Maybe to create contrast for the for the words. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we've already looked up here. Let's look on the bottom. Probably power. Yep. So we got a three volt power. And right there we've got the motor. Very cool. On the back here. This is neato. We've got <laughs> the flywheel, which is probably plastic. And a heavy, beefy, hopefully metal flywheel is essential to eliminating wow and flutter. When you have a lightweight flywheel, the whole reason why it's big is to create mass inertia. So when it rotates, the motor fluctuations, the cogging, the you know, the little stair step movements of it that any electric motor has can be absorbed through the rubber belt and the fact that the flywheel has you know good mass inertia and doesn't respond to the little fluctuations of speed. However, when you've got a small lightweight plastic one, that's hard to do. So I'm guessing we're gonna have an issue right there. This is cool, look at this. So this is the volume knob on the back side. You can see essentially it's just a variable resistor with different positions, that is really neat. There's that darn belt clip. Let's see if we can get that off. I do not like belt clips. Push and pull. There. Okay. Always like to get rid of those. This is great. We can kind of get a teardown action without having to tear it down. You can see the resistors. We've got transistors. We've got all kinds of stuff. A couple ICs in there. Still a fairly basic device. Let's go ahead and open this up. Let's go ahead and open this up. You can see the top of the motor on there they probably have a sticker oftentimes i'll put like a little sticker so that it doesn't short out on anything although the middle of it the hub of the motor is still kind of protruding there it is a single direction motor so we've only got one pinch roller which corresponds to that cap stand which is right underneath that flywheel right there look how the little fins or the little pieces that stick out from that are kind of cupped in the one direction that it will rotate and for comparison, you can see that other post is just a little bit smaller because it helps with tape, tape alignment, but it is completely passive. There's no movement, doesn't rotate. It just is what it is. All right, what do I wonder the second I get a cassette player recorder? I wanna know about the head because that is the most important part. So let's see if I can somehow get a shot of the head. Meanwhile, you can see other aspects of it. You would think with a clear device that it would be easy to get this shot, but it's still very difficult as this is one of those clamshells that just does not like to open very much. But, yep, that is a mono head, ladies and gentlemen. You can see right in the center of your screen there, mono, which is, it is disappointing because it's like, why not go stereo? By the way, I am zoomed in, so let's get a uh, close-up look around the outside edge. Why not, right? So, if you're familiar with cassette Walkman type of devices, this is going to be very familiar to what we are used to. Why not a close shot of loading batteries? That would be fun. <laughs> Why not, right? So that one goes in there. And this one spring loads in the back. Oops. Make sure it is in place. Yeah, there we go. Now we just need a tape. And for the tape, I will be using my ye old test tape, which is a TDK. To be precise, it is a TDK D60 Type 1 tape, ferric oxide, but as you can see, that dark, rich color, it is a very good ferric oxide tape. So we're going to insert it like this, and that is a look with the tape loader. That's cool. There's no doubt that that is absolutely cool. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is off camera, I'm gonna try these earbuds and let you know if they are any good or if you should probably toss them or if they will just get you by until you can invest in higher head higher end headphones okay so these headphones do not sound good they the sound was mostly coming out of the left side they were boxy and hollow sounding which is a bummer 
Not all headphones, earbuds that come with devices are not good, but these ones, you'll wanna upgrade these right away if you end up getting this. As a quick aside, this is not good either. Coke and coffee, two things that don't belong together. This is the caramel one. By the way, is it caramel or caramel? There's a debate going on in this house right now about that. So I would recommend sticking with these nice little tiny cans of Pepsi and Coke. I like both, Coke and Pepsi. All right, back to the project at hand here. We're not here to talk about soda or soda mixed with coffee. We're here to talk about off-brand Walkmans. So off-brand Walkmans can sound good. They can function well, but does this one. And it's gonna be hard for you to understand how it performs if you can't hear it. And we can't share earbuds. You do a lot of things online, but sharing headphones is not one of them. We could do a direct feed sound test, but it's Sunday as I'm filming this, and in order to do that, we'll take an inordinate amount of time for editing, so we are going to listen to it on this sound bar. We're gonna use a front-facing stereo mics. Not that the stereo matters, because this is mono, but we are gonna compare this and this. We're gonna listen to a homemade tape that I have used, that I've created. We're going to be listening to a Dolby B pre-recorded tape, and we're gonna be using my trusty Samsung tablet. Well, that case looks really dirty on camera. We're gonna use that to show you what the original sound sounds like and really just give it a comparison. We'll also listen to the radio as well. So let me get set up and we'll jump right into it. Okay, so let's start with the actual file that I'm using. This is a Kevin McLeod track. Love Kevin McLeod. Great copyright free music. Just give him credit and you can pretty much use his music for anything. But we are going to be listening to an mp3 so it is compressed but for the purposes of this it's not going to matter because youtube compresses audio anyway here's what the file sounds like <laughs> pretty clear it's pretty crisp now let's listen to this clear tech playing the same recording recorded with no Dolby on a type 1 ferric oxide tape It doesn't sound so good. I mean, it honestly doesn't. Let's flip, let's take the tape out. Yes, there's a little grounding noise on this, but that's pretty typical. Let's take the cassette out of this and put it into the Sharp. And we'll give it a test. See that grounding noise goes away the second you plug it in and it's properly grounded. pre-recorded cassette the uh, the sharp wins no huge surprise there but there seems to be you know a lot of background and signal and carrier noise on this now the big question is okay what did it sound like when you were listening on your good earphones which I did try even though the channels were balanced evenly which is how I knew that the headphones were causing the left channel prominence issue they Definitely sounded noisy. You could hear the motor noise. That was frustrating. That seems to be a commonality with modern retro cassette mechanisms. It's kind of an oxymoron, but you know what I mean. Modern cassette mechanisms seem to all have carrier noise and motor noise that gets into the audio, which is really frustrating. Somehow with the vintage units, that's never a problem. You never hear the motor noise. As you could just hear, it's Got a different sound signature, which doesn't mean it's good or bad, but the uh, the signal noise, you know, is really, really annoying. All right, so that was a pre-recorded tape that I made on the uh, Yamaha with the glass ferrite heads. Again, no Dolby. 
We're gonna be listening to this now. This is a pre-recorded stereo tape. It is Dolby B, as you can see. It's on a pretty good looking mixture though. Uh, obviously it's gonna be a ferric oxide type one tape. And the Dolby B is important to mention because in essence, the way Dolby works is it amplifies the high end frequencies so that well, upon playback, it can push them back down and flatten the audio. And we've done shows about that as well. Why that's important to mention is Dolby B tapes usually perform pretty well on cheap modern mechanisms because the heads, even if they're stereo, modern heads, cheap heads often sound muddy. So by having a strong, bright, high-end frequency focus, it kind of counteracts the fact that these are kind of muddy on the high end. So it should sound better than the pre-recorded tape I made. So let's go ahead and give that a go. We'll do the same thing. We'll listen on here and on the other unit as well. harsh <laughs> it sounds pretty harsh so what we're gonna do is put the same tape into this guy we're going to plug in see how that ground is resolved the second we plug it in which to be fair the same thing with this once I plugged it in that ground hum went away but here we go <laughs> I think we could agree that this does not perform as well as this, but it's not about the Sharp or any vintage unit. This is about this guy right here. Funny they put the clear window, even though the whole thing is sort of a window. It is very cool in a lot of ways. I love the form factor. It feels good in the hand. The construction from a physical standpoint seems to be spot on. But what about the performance? Does it sound good? And it's noticeably inferior from a sound quality standpoint to even an entry-level vintage unit. So the big question is, is it worth 38 bucks, which we'll get to in a minute, at least my opinion of that. One more thing we need to check out though is the radio. Sometimes with devices like this, the cassette part, which is important considering it's a cassette player, can be outshined by features that are afterthought, such as the radio. Maybe not an afterthought, but the you know what I mean? People aren't buying this for a radio. They're buying it for the cassette. But let's go ahead and connect it and give that little tuner a test. Okay, let's go ahead and test out the radio. Now, do you hear that clippingness when it goes in and out of signal? That means it's a digital tuner, which is what we expected. I've tried. So if she's complaining that you don't listen, for example, don't... So I don't have it cranked right now. I have this up all the way, but the speaker's kind of turned down low. I just want to hear the tuning and the clarity. I can't even wrap my head around it yet. It's got great reception. For FM, it's going to be using the headphone jack, that cable, as the antenna. AM is going to use a ferrite rod antenna that's internal. Yeah, great reception. Let's flip it over to AM. Not so good on AM. Wow, there's that was it for AM. Everything's got that carrier signal in there. Wow. AM not so good. Now, there's a lot there are a lot of variables at play here. The cable that I'm using, the proximity, the Wi-Fi router that I've got going on, the speaker itself. So this whole video is still a fairly cursory video 
in that somebody else may pick this up and have a completely different experience based on a lot of other factors. So that's something to keep in mind. It doesn't just go for me. It goes for everybody that's reviewing anything. There's a lot of factors that play into it. But all I can do is tell you my experience and my thoughts. So at the end of the day, the question is, is this thing worth $38? <laughs> no. I would say no. Even when off-brand cassette players were prevalent in the marketplace, you know, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, these were like $10, not $10, like $15 thing, $13.99, $14.99, $15.99 US dollars. You know, 38 bucks for this is rough. Obviously they're doing that because it's costing more to source this than it was so many years ago. That being said, the product that we're left with does not justify that cost. I'm not somebody that goes to Urban Outfitters a lot. You could probably tell that. However, I do think it's cool that they're bringing tech to kids that you know otherwise wouldn't interact with it. There still is value for somebody to experience cassettes even in this form because hopefully it will spark them on a lifelong journey to want to learn more and you know go down that road further. Same thing with vinyl. I think that this isn't the best device to start with if you're thinking about getting into cassettes. Cassettes is one area that I do agree vintage really, really is better. But the trick is if you go too old, you're gonna have you know capacitors that need replacing, belts that need replacing. That being said, there's a lot of vintage units that will perform much better than this at a fair price. Case in point, my Sharp, which I got on eBay for I think 10 bucks, didn't need a belt or anything. I did make a minor speed adjustment, but even if I didn't do that, it was a solid performer. All right, if you enjoyed that show as much as I enjoyed putting it together for you, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. I know a lot of you guys haven't subbed yet. That is huge for us. So if you could just hit that, it doesn't cost you anything, just hit the thumbs up and then subscribe. That would mean a world of difference to us. And it would also help YouTube know that we've got so many people out there that wanna see more of this stuff and help placing our videos in front of more folks so that they can join in as well. We also have a host of other cool stuff, including all new merch down below. We've got an extra show a week for people that join the nation. We've got TikTok, all that fun stuff, links down below. But my friends, that's gonna do it for today. So happy record hunting, and we will see you next time.